Hello, this video is about Fast Embed and Quadrant for image classification. Fast Embed is a lightweight and fast Python library designed for generating high quality text embeddings, but also image embeddings. Um, if you go to their site, which is on one of these links on my web page, so this that you're looking at here is a recent web page on my website, redandgreen.co.uk. And we've got quadrant.github.io fast embed. And if we go there and have a look and see what they've got for us, what is fast embed? Lightweight, blah, blah, blah. So it uses ONNX runtime for inference. So it doesn't use PyTorch or LibTorch. I've been having some issues. I don't know if it's because my laptop is six years old <clears throat> so just uh, bring it up for you i'll just show you the spec of it so this might not be a problem with the newer laptop but uh yeah this is um 1.7 gigahertz i5 8350u uh for two threads per core there you go anyway so um what this does is give you um, lightweight and very fast embeddings. There's an article which I link to on here. Um, maybe it was further down. It was a Medium article. Uh, there we go. Benchmarks for fast embed. <clears throat> a bit bigger. And it's a Medium article, and he shows that using PyTorch, uh, just bear with me while I find it. Uh, it's black on a white background down here. Somewhere. So he used um, sentence transformers. So admittedly, this was with uh, text rather than images, because in a minute, I'm just going to cover images. But this was with text, and then using fast embed, um fast embed took 0.02 seconds and without fast embed took 0.038 so almost twice as long um this is now developed by quadrant i don't know if it always has been but either way i think it's uh it's likely to be around for a long time, so I think it's um, it's a good investment of uh, an hour or two to uh, understand it. So pip install fast embed, and then this example, just doing some text embedding, and then, um, yeah, embeds the documents, and the documents is that list of things. Um, to use... To use it without Quadrant, sorry, with Quadrant, you need to do pip install quadrant-client. Then that, um, <laughs> these square brackets you don't actually use. So it's quadrant-client space fast embed. And then you basically, you create a collection, the docs are the docs, which is the, the actual text. You can add some metadata. The IDs you typically will create from an enum. Um, I believe you can also ask it to generate the IDs for you. Um, the IDs are useful for when you're doing the search because then you um, can do like a reverse, well, like a reverse image search. Um, a lot of this is still new to me, but I just wanted to share it because it got me out of a sticky situation because I was attempting to use PyTorch, my laptop was going to a hole, I was getting, um, and also I tried to use some Rust and I was getting compile errors and I just think it's, uh, I think there's a lot of a, uh, advice on Stack Overflow about changing your environment variables and so on, but I even tried all that and uh, yeah, I was getting um, some weird, very strange compile errors. It was missing uh, Torch forward slash header dot cpp i think it was um so this is just a little overview of a project i've done which was using um, images and then i had two directories <clears throat> so basically it's a bit like um 
training uh, a test in a train split. So obviously the the um, the directory containing human faces was called human, and then the directory without the human faces was non-human. Um, I can fire that up for you in a second if you like. I can demonstrate it as well. So uh, CD. Oh, sorry about that, Python. No, wrong one. So see the document. I would edit this, but it's so hot at the moment. I don't want to spend too much time at the computer. It's um, it's been twenty one, sorry, twenty nine degrees here in the UK today, which is uh, yeah, really hot for <laughs> really hot for somebody in England. Uh, fast in bed. And um. Yeah, so I've got a Jupyter notebook. I've got an images data set. So if we just open up that uh, images data set, I've got human, not human, and then uh, I've got a directory called users image. So um, that's where I look for the image that the user supplies. And obviously, you could create a um, Flask front end to that, Gradio, whatever you need. Um, JavaScript, HTML, whatever, but you just want a, a front end where you can upload an image and then it will compare it against whether it's a human or not human. Um, so I've just trained it on, yeah, six humans and uh, six non humans. So I put in a monkey just to kind of test it. It was could tell the difference between a monkey and a human. Um, some cats, a beach, laptop, and a bottle of Coke. And um, all of these user images, when I've put them in, it's classified them correctly. So um, if I just fire up Jupyter, uh, the other thing I need to do is I need to, in the background, I need to start up the Docker image. Um, there we go. <clears throat> all the notes are on that web page, but if you just go to Quadrant, um, the Get Started the get started page will, t will show you through all that in fact i think i even put a link to it on um on here use the quadrant client get started with vector quadrant database there you go you've got it here so it's quadrant.tech um and you can use grpc as well so you can just make sure you get the right port whether it ends in a three or a four um right so we've got the backend vector database running. And now I'm just going to get Jupyter Notebook up and running. Uh, it's, it's so hot. It's just, I'm not used to the heat. I apologize. This is why I'm, I'm recording this. Uh, it's uh, yeah half past 10 at night because it's been too hot all day. Right, so uh, all this is just some setup stuff. I'm just showing the, I did a tree just to show you the directory structure. So I did use a virtual env, but you don't have to. Um, that's my Jupyter notebook that you're looking at now. FMB is just the environment. So images, data set, and then inside there, I've got human, not human, and then users image. So that's what we just saw in the GUI. Um, so these are your imports. Quadrant client. So pip install quadrant dash client as we saw. Um, space fast embed. And then from fast embed, import image embedding because we're going to be doing images. And then from quadrant client models, port point struct, vector params, and distance. <clears throat> we're going to be finding the, when we do our search, we're going to be finding the closest distance. I think we're using, um, yeah, we're using cosine. Yeah, there we go. Look, you can use um, Euclidean cosine or dot. Um, <clears throat> I haven't experimented with those too much. That's slightly beyond the level I'm at right now. But uh, yeah, so that's the model. So where normally you would have to kind of specify a hugging face model, here you just put quadrant forward slash, and these quad these these models or this model is already being included with by quadrant into 
the fast embed library. So let's just run it. So there we go. I'm creating um, a directory, sorry, a list for the image paths and the labels. And then we're going to walk down through human and not human directories and find all the JPEGs. Load the model. Um, we've got TQDM, so it shows us the nice. Um, so this model is 352 three, megabytes. So as models go, this is nice and small. And um, so it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good even on an old laptop. So it's one of the, um, I think in a way, although it's a slight handicap, it's also a good thing because it forces you to be um, very uh, efficient and always try and find, if you try and find the smallest models, as long as they, they're good models, then um, as and when you deploy that, it's going to be really fast because you've already <laughs> optimized. So the embeddings equals list model dot embed and then image paths. So the image paths are um, what we walked through. Create the collection. Collection name is image classification. Um, there used to be within Quadrant, it used to be recreate collection, but they're deprecating that. So now I'm just doing, excuse me, delete collection and then create collection. I think the best way to do it would probably do, I think, is you can check if it exists. This works anyway, so keep going. And uh, name embed. Oh, I didn't run embedding, sorry. Embeddings, create collection. There we go. Um, so that's true. So that's worked. Insert points into quadrant. So at this point, we've <clears throat> we've embedded the we've created the embeddings. So we've got the vectors. Now we need to actually um, let's see vector equals embedding there just here, and then the payload. So the payload is sort of like the um, if it was text, the payload would be the plain English version. And all we're doing here is we're doing a um, uh for idx embedding and enumerate embeddings um so we're doing a it's a comprehension of some sort <laughs> it's a list comprehension isn't it we've got the square brackets so we're doing a list comprehension which is going to create the points um there is another way of doing it without using points which i can't remember right now but um just i'm just mentioning it um, run that. So we've got our points, and now we want to do all of the initialized embedding model. So this is the um, this is the search now. So we've done the embedding, update result completed, state is completed. And in fact, if we went to uh, just to show you, there's no sort of camera trickery, so to speak. Uh, if I went to, um, where's the, uh, there it is. Oh. There we go. So I've got a Jupyter notebook. It's, yeah, I should probably should be using Tmux, but uh, there we go. So dashboard, if we open that, it brings up a GUI. And now you see that's, it's, that's definitely the one we've just created. And then we've got point naught, point one, point two. It's a bit like um if you know other languages like like Rust, it would that would be or C it would be a struct. So we've got a struct um with some keys and values in. Um so you've got key, value, key, value, and then vectors, which is uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not displayed because um they would look a bit odd. You can visualize this. So if you go to visualize and just do run down here, see we've got all these dots. So obviously this is running some sort of JavaScript and it's not really showing in 3D. But some. Anyway, so back to the model. So now we're going to do the search. So um, set up to clut the embedding model because we need to do an embedding on our search um, image. 
So we're going to pass in, um, we'll pass in an image that we need to embed. And then, so I'm passing in image 27, which is in my users image directory. Um, but before we, um, so that is new image path, which is getting passed in to this function. So this function creates a new embedding. And basically then we look for the embedding, which is um, nearest. And then, well, we limit to one. We only need the closest result. So if you can remember all of this code and write it without checking any notes or whatever, then I'm impressed. <laughs> I guess if you do it every day, but um, I don't do this every day, but I'm kind of doing it, working on this more and more. So. Um, there we go, the new image is classified as human. And that's what you saw earlier. Um, if do 20, see what we get. There we see, we've got a seaside scene and it's not human. You'll have to take my word for it that this works, but it does, I, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> I did see some video. I did see a video on YouTube where uh, the title was um, "Companies are faking at their AI" or "AI demos are fake" or something. Um, I don't really. I suppose this is AI, obviously, but it's if you instead of the images, you imagine it was text, and then it's you know there is a linear progress from sort of NLP. Um, named entity recognition through to kind of semantic search and so on. So it's not like it's just been um, not to 100 overnight. It's just been a progression. So um, I think it's probably a bit unfair to say that every AI demo is fake because <laughs> copy this code. Um, you're welcome to, if you get in touch, I can provide you with a link to the code. But um, I don't really want to distribute it because it's kind of development and uh, I may use it for some stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's probably not um, production quality code, but it works and it's great for a demo. And uh, yeah, all using Fast Embed, which was the whole purpose of this video, really. So if you want to read more, um, Fast embed substantially decreases the time for required for embedding because embedding is probably one of the one of the bottlenecks really. I mean, I'm only using about 20 or 20, 30 images here, but imagine you had um, 100,000 or 500,000 images, then embedding is um, where you can make the best gains. Lightweight, fast, accurate. It's also um, it outperforms PyTorch in terms of processing speed, employs data parallelism, um, it's accurate, and it's very well suited to uh, serverless environments like AWS Lambda. So, yeah, there you go. Pip install fast embed or pip install fast embed GPU. But I think you can, uh, I can't remember. I think you can just get it just by using um, pip install quadrant. Uh, where was it? Back here. Yeah, pip install fast embed. Or, or you can get it by um, installing, installing it using quadrant. So quadrant.tech. <clears throat> Um, the client you can write in Rust as well, or TypeScript, Java, C Sharp. A lot of their demos just show creating a collection where they kind of manually um, build the um, the list of point structs. Um, so there is a little bit of a leap between their tutorial or their basic tutorials or basic uh, documentation, and then when you're actually importing. Uh, your own file because you need to iterate over it and then kind of um, typically you need to enumerate as well because you've got the IDs and then you've got the vector and then you've got the payload. So yeah, a little bit more to it than their examples show. Um, that's why it's kind of useful to have hopefully videos like this because it just shows you 
how to actually import data rather than just hard code it within the body of the body of the um, uh, the tutorial example. So yeah, there we go. Fast embed. So fast embed and quadrum. And the beauty of this is you could run it all on premise. So you would, although quadrant do an online uh, cloud version, that's optional. So for free, you could get um, either Docker or you could install it locally. The quadrant vector database. Quadrant. Um, and then you also get it's available on Hugging Face as well, but uh, you don't need to get it from Hugging Face because it's already included with the Fast Embed library. So you, you've got Fast Embed, you've got Quadrum, you've got those two. Once you've got those two, um, yeah. So the models, supported models, uh, which are currently included. So by installing Fast Embed, you get all of these models. Um, so you've got the Sentence Transformers model, the Mini LM L6 V2, which is a really popular one. Um, and yeah, and then I was surprised, pleasantly surprised when I saw it had the um, clip vision encoder. And these are the sizes. So the sizes really are not not too scary at, at all. Um, and it runs nicely on an old laptop. So there's no, really, there's no real barrier to to learning um, some of this. So yeah, happy days. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. If you want me to do a more kind of structured video with, um, you know, I could run, I could type it all in and um, yeah, add some, add way more comments and describe exactly what I'm doing. But um, a lot of this is still new to me. So it's not, it works and it works perfectly, but I wouldn't like to say it's um, production ready. So uh, yeah. It's all a bit of a learning curve and um, the goalposts are always moving slightly, aren't they? But um, this, this is really good to get started. The, the Quadrant website and um, say their, the benefit of using Quadrant as opposed to compared to say Pinecone, Quadrant gives you the Docker image and you can run everything locally. So A, that's cheaper. B, you may, when, you may work for a company who wants to keep their data on site, um, especially with regard to the recent or the endless security breaches around the world and in the cloud and so on and so on. So um, yeah, Quadrant, I'd recommend them. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment, uh, hit the bell notification, all that stuff that all the YouTube people say because the algorithm likes it apparently. So um, yeah, thanks for watching.